I think that the case for a strong productivity gain for, from generative AI is definitely there as a general purpose technology. And as I said before, is one that's likely to move much faster. I'm not as sure about jobs. So traditionally, if we think about tasks or jobs, when we've had technological improvements, the just general productivity effects that Adam Smith himself talked about with technology or the creation of whole new things led to new tasks and jobs, that all happened fast enough to replace whatever is lost. I think that will happen again here, but I'm a little bit less sure. I wanted to get your take. If the productivity gains don't necessarily have to translate into employment. So what do you think? Well, first of all, there are those who know they don't know and those who don't know they don't know. And I'm in the camp of those who, of one who knows that he doesn't know. Second, Glenn, I think it's important. People have tend to blur this up. It's kind of unquestionable that there was a substantial productivity acceleration in the 1990s. Um, my read, and it was associated with IT, my read is it was probably not associated with the internet. It was probably associated with the IT investments that had been moving forward for the previous 15 or 20 years. So I think that one can very easily overdo the estimates of the impact that AI is going to have on productivity in the next few years. If we get a productivity acceleration, I suspect it's gonna be more a lagged response to a lot of things that have been happening over 15 years, than it's gonna be an immediate response to um, the GPT and to uh, some of the other things that have been introduced in the last year or two. I think these things are ultimately going to have very profound effects. Um, somebody said something very powerful uh, to me. He said, this represents a new way of knowing in the same way that the scientific method represented a new way of knowing. And that kind of example um, points you towards believing that the effects are more profound, but not necessarily more rapid than uh, one might have uh, supposed. I also think it's important to remember in assessing all this that what AI does overlaps with what people who write articles about technologies do. And therefore, we may be quicker to see all its effects than we are when there are innovations that are transformative, but not for people who write articles uh, for a living. And I think that's important to remember. I am guardedly optimistic that because this is going to come for EQ, before it comes for IQ, that it may be more egalitarian in its implications than many of the previous uh, revolutions in uh, technology um, that have uh, taken uh, that have taken place, and that it may well facilitate there being more time spent in human contact with uh, patients in uh, hospitals and uh, the like. So I would be surprised if this came without dislocation, but I would also be surprised if it was a different level of dislocation than we have uh, experienced, um, than 
we have experienced before. But it is something that we are going to need to be uh, very carefully monitoring as we uh, move forward. Yeah, any thoughts on um, our own little narrow world in the teaching in, in universities? I was at the American Economic Association meetings last week, and there were sessions, you know, decrying chat GPT and cheating. I, I always thought that that was kind of a small bore subject. The bigger thing is just the question of how do you evaluate students and in, indeed performance it doesn't have to be in a classroom setting in this world. Any, any thoughts on that? Look, I think the big thing, the big thing in education is if you think about it around the world, there are probably 150,000 lectures given every fall on what it means to take a derivative in the introductory calculus. And surely there is a better way of communicating that information than to have 150,000 people give lectures. And that better way involves much more uh, figuring out the best way, best 10 ways to communicate the material, connecting everyone with those materials and having everything else be much more individualized and in groups. So when I think about IT and education, including AI and education, I think the cheating issue is a third order issue. There was a time, I'm old enough to remember when there were many people who felt that you really got insight from working something out on a slide rule in a way you didn't get insight when you worked it out on a calculator. I remember being told that to take a currently obsolete art, that there was real pedagogical value in learning to take a square root with pencil and uh, paper. Um, I don't think that is uh, real. If you go back, uh, there are people who decried the evolution of reading relative to listening and speaking as a mode of uh, transmission of uh, knowledge. So I would be amazed, uh, Glenn, if we don't find a new synthesis in which people learn to use AI as a tool in producing uh, knowledge as an input uh, to the work they do as students. That doesn't mean that educators aren't gonna have to uh, think carefully, but I think of this as being a low, low end uh, problem. Uh, I would worry about um, false apparent knowledge. I would worry about uh, problematic uh, addiction. I would worry about anime from attachments to machines rather than uh, people. I would worry about many, many things before I worried about that particular educational problem. 